Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and we're doing another one of these. I might make a habit out of this. We'll see. It depends on whether or not something comes along. So, let's talk about roll. Yesterday, or depending on how you want to look at this, roll uploaded their storefront. And this I find pretty interesting. Now, Storefront is in early access, but Roll has been around for a little while as one of the many virtual tabletops that are around these days. And I brought this up briefly when I talked about 1D&D and how their attempt at trying to do their own virtual tabletop might end up blowing up in their face simply because of how competitive that platform is. But there's another thing that I failed to, that I failed to mention, and that is the the fact that Drive Through RPG and its parent company One Bookshelf have a massive market share when it comes to ta when it comes to tabletop. I bring this kind of thing up because this does tie into the He-Man and fandom thing that I mentioned the other day where I didn't like the storefront that Fandom had set up. They really should have either used DriveThruRPG or just used something that was a little more user-friendly. Well, there always seems to be a interesting bit of timing with these kind of things. Because then this dropped, and while obviously it's not there yet, it is an interesting response to the market share that DriveThruRPG has. Especially, I've seen some people compare it to the Epic Game Store. I'm not quite ready to go down that route yet, but I can see why, given the exclusivity thing. Especially since I think some people still have PTSD from the times when Epic Game Store was, was grabbing every exclusive it could. But... The material that's here, I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that I that you can just shrug off. And truth be told, me saying that that me trying to imply that this is some competitor to DTRPG, I don't want to make that comparison. If anything, I would say that this is far more likely to be a competitor to the itch.io storefront because. While there's some good games and some not-so-good games on the RPG landscape on Itch, as well as the Game Jam initiatives, trying to navigate Itch to find the good stuff is needle in a haystack at the best of times. Even I have some trouble, and given my reputation, that's saying something. But I would like to take a bit of time to look into what they have present. Um... So far, we only have, like, nine items. One of them is, the, is, their, 5e mo is their 5e module, along with a couple freebies. Um, Cabin in the Glade, which is a free starter adventure for 5e. Um, Chrome, which, let's take a look at what Chrome is. Go. It is, it, it's its own um, role-playing game. Which is a, which is a freebie that has a theme web app. And something of note is that Roll seems to want to try and take a different approach when it comes to the presentation of a lot of virtual tabletop, which is nice and all, but a concern that I've had for the longest time, and I will still have, is how they're going to handle user-generated content. About a year ago, when I had Mark Kern on, I had said that. Something that is desperately needed is a tabletop equivalent to Steam Workshop. Some sort of pl some sort of place that makes it a lot easier to find homebrews and mods. I know some people might say that D&D Beyond has that. It does not. First off, you're not first off, you're not able to put up homebrews private and though I though I could be wrong on that, but the bigger problem and I'm I know I mentioned this regarding D and D Beyond is the fact that there are only certain things that you're able to homebrew on their servers. The deal breaker is not being able to make classes, wanting every wanting everything to be within that class list, even though there are certain archetypes, even in D and D's history, 
that don't fit those. I know that they tried to do the whole make scions into a set of subclasses. That's not a scion. You can claim it is, but it's not. And the the amount the amount of hemming and hawing just to get the artificer to be a full on class and not made into a subclass. Which I think I think was considered at one point. But let's see, Homeworld Revelations, getting back getting back on things, which is just the quick start version. The Modifist will probably put out the full version, but that but that is it that is interesting. Uh oh. See, then we have Astra, which is one of their exclusives, which describes itself as ethereal weirdness, has its rule book and a, s a set of images, as well as as well as the and it's up for twenty, which isn't too bad. And I do like the tags here. Oh. Let's see, Isle of Ix, which looks like something. That had come straight out of Exalted Funeral. Oh, no. Actually, never mind. It's using the Into the Odd license, so it's not far off. Uh, Lancer, which I've talked about. Uh, Lancer Battle Group, which is an exclusive. And is all about naval combat. Which... It certainly ha it certainly has that vibe. It it's, pro it's probably going to lean more into a war gaming than a role playing game, which I think is the one exception here. Um, then Void Walkers, which wants to be a a space opera that's using powered by the apocalypse. One thing that I'm noticing, it's. Leaning a, it's leaning a bit into rules light affairs. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is the problem that I also had with with a lot of the games on itch is is the fact that so there were so many of them that were leaning into hacks of things like PBTA or Cal, or Caltrop. Sometimes fate, if you're lucky, but those two were, those two were the big ones, especially PBTA. Which is understandable, that's a very simple system and it's very easy to hack. My issue is is going to be with variety. I hope that more complex games show up as well. Now, I'm putting a bunch of asterisks on this because, again, early, again, very early access. This thing rolled out just a few days ago at the time of this recording. But what, what I hope ends up happening is this being used as a way to get in, to, to get indie games a chance to have the kind of integration that you, that you see a lot of the bigger names have with virtual tabletop programs. I can't necessarily say that I'd be willing to get in bed with Roll quite yet. If there's any virtual tabletop on the market that I'd probably be willing to try again and recommend to people. It's probably Foundry or Mythic Table, especially since Mythic Table is open source. And I will admit a bit of bias when it comes to Mythic Table because because both backing it and interviewing the um, lead developer. But I'm not going to say that Roll having their own storefront is going to be a bad thing. It's just I need more time to actually take a look, but it is... It's something that I don't think should be slept on, which is why I decided to cover it. Time will tell if it ends up being able to reach its full height, or if it's just another flash of the pan, because there's a lot of those. So until then, stay frosty, folks.